Hello punters and welcome back to another Saturday Racing Preview. Of course, this video looking at the Rose Hill meeting tomorrow uh, at, well, at Rose Hill, of course. And obviously it's Golden Eagle Day, the feature pre uh, race of the program. $7.5 million up for grabs. Also got the SES Stakes uh, go, uh, in race number six, which really looking forward to that. Oh, uh, sorry, race number seven, that one is uh, over the 1300 metres. So really looking forward to that one. Terrific field assembled for that uh, race on that program as well. Fortunately, we'll get a heavy eight track for tomorrow for Randwick. Um, so, you know, a bit of a shame and looks to be still a bit of showers around uh, for that. I don't think we'll be getting any any lower than... Uh, we, hopefully, we can get a bit of an upgrade to a, a soft seven, but I do think we'll be uh, working in the heavy range. Um, but at least it's a, bit of, a little bit better than the heavy nine that we had uh, yesterday. So uh, that's a bit of a positive. But if you're new to this video, obviously subscribe. Um, yeah, I would really appreciate the subscription. Um, and also, uh, the, like the video, comment down below. Let me know if any of your thoughts... Uh, for the races tomorrow, go and check out my Derby Day preview of the Flemington program. Uh, I've done that uh, just before this one, so go and check that out if you haven't already done so. Uh, but without any further ado, we get stuck straight to the program. So if you are new here, I'd look through every race on the program, break them down, and sort of give all my best chances in the race, suggested bets, um, and then also top four selections. So for me, it's a little bit better. If some of you that watch me uh, or, or have seen my social media pages, which are C Lane underscore racing tips on Facebook and C Lane race tips. Uh, underscore racing tips on Instagram. Uh, obviously, you would know that I, I post videos and my quality, uh, sorry, post the tips and the quality selections and whatnot. But I, I find that this, and I think many of you may or may not agree uh, in this video, that it, it's much better to, if you want to hear my thoughts properly, you need to watch these videos so you can understand as well. Because sometimes I might put a tip out there, but I'll be saying, you know, you might not want to bet on it as strongly as what. Um, yeah, it's a bit hard to, to sort of say on social media, whereas it's a lot easier to explain on video. So that's why I find a lot of benefit in doing these videos for any of you that um, follow me in. So first race on the program over the 1,200 metres, Tab Highway Handicap Race. Um, so, yeah, looking at the uh, the Hot Tab Highway Race, sorry about some of the pauses. I'm obviously uh, keeping an eye on the Moody Valley races uh, as we speak, so I will be probably you know, sort of pausing the video here and there throughout so apologies for that but uh, as you probably know you've got to keep an eye on the races and got to uh, watch them and cheer them home and whatnot um, when you've got uh, tips and uh, sorry bets on them uh, so looking at the tab highway race obviously tomorrow um, witness collector I think will be like landing towards the pace uh, cock match Arcado, Shania uh, I think Crackneck and Monica Star they usually like to roll forth Matt from their outside barriers they'll be up there and as will Blitzer so I can see plenty of pace going on in this race here again and I think it'll set up really nice for number four depth that varies I think love this horse's performance two starts back behind Air Marshall it's only just beaten by one of the great rides by Tommy Berry it was a sensational ride and I know it went around on social media quite a bit because it was just such a encapsulating ride it was really a terrific performance on that occasion so uh, you know, he, he the depth of various really ranged up and probably thought uh, he had the field covered and maybe just uh, let off a little bit because didn't really see, uh, I guess, Air Marshall weaving a passage through the middle of the field and, and coming up on the inside. So uh, depth of various, I was really good on that occasion. Comes in this third up. I think the heavy track won't be an issue. It's had a place on it before. So I think that it is the one to beat. It uh, looks to get a decent uh, tempo to come into the race off of and hopefully they're just able to run on on the day. Uh, that's the only little thing with that. But um, the other one that I don't mind as well, in for second, Arkendo uh, obviously has been pretty stiff. It's had uh, multiple seconds now in a row in its career. It's had, uh, it hasn't missed the top two place in its six starts so far in its career, which is obviously something that you want to see. Um, he, he ran in that real terrific race first up behind Pelter, um, and I be believe uh, you know, uh, Andermatt was also in that race, which, I mean, that type of form reads really nicely for a highway like this. And uh, first up was beaten by either or Kembler at over a thousand metres. I think that's a good enough form race to bring into this, this type of race and suggest it'll run well. So it goes in for second. Uh, in for third, I've got number nine, Crackneck, who I think was, uh, again, very good uh, last time out in the high race at Ramwick uh, over the 1100 metres in that air marshal depth at various race and finds itself at $10 here. I think it's a bit over the odds. So uh, it goes in for third. Uh, just needs to navigate that wide barrier. That's your only little query with it. Uh, and then in the fourth, I've got number two, Cock Match. I think can race nicely first up with, with National Wheel of the Saddle and as a horse that uh, has run well on heavy track before. So plenty of uh, positives there. Uh, Blitzer, obviously, uh, comes in this as the favourite. Just a little bit of a query on the wet track. That's the only thing for me. Blinkers do go on first time, which is a positive. I just don't think it should be favourite, uh, personally. Uh, and then the other horse that I didn't mind in the race as well was uh, the... Uh, sorry, the... 
The th- I thought the three Tchaikovsky was a bit over the odds. Uh, finished fifth last time out uh, in the high race at Randwick on a good track. My, again, only query with this horse is the heavy surface, but it was in that same race, the Air Marshal and Depth of Varies. Only a length off uh, of Depth of Varies and, and finds itself at 35 to 1, while Depth of Varies is $7.50. So probably... You know, bit of a you know, probably the price discrepancy probably isn't right there, and I, I think with Brandon Griffith's claims comes down to fifty six, which I mean, have a look back at last time out, it, it carried fifty five, uh, so it goes up a kilo, but depth that varies goes up. Uh, sorry, with to- Tom Sherry's claim of three, he actually uh, only goes up a kilo and a half. So, you know, probably okay, probably fair enough. Um, only the, the slight weight swing, but I mean, yeah, like I said. Tchaikovsky was only a length off and finds himself at 35 to 1. Looks a bit over the odds for me. But uh, recapping the numbers on the first in the program at Rose Hill. Uh, I've got the uh, number... Uh, sorry, number four uh, depth that varies on top ahead of number seven, Arcado, the second. I think the run of seconds might continue for that horse. In the third, I've got number one... Uh, no, sorry, no, I don't. Number nine, Crack Neck. And then in the fourth, I've got number two, Cock Match. Uh, moving on to race number two on the program now, benchmark 72, uh, over 1,400 metres. Just a small field here, but quite a competitive field as well. Looks like a, quite a nice race. I think Ellsberg and Fortune Seeker and C- Colonel will probably be the likely leaders in this race. The Enchanted Heart and Xanthus probably not too far away either. Uh, look, I'm pretty keen to go with Ellsberg here. I think this horse was really good winning first up. Obviously, the, the heavy track is going to be a query of this horse, as it will be with a lot of them, but... Uh, I just love that first up performance. Come, it comes in this right down the way to the 52 kilos. And uh, for me, it looks to have a bit of uh, upside. Sal Burrows ran well midweek um, at, on the Kensington track. So the form's good enough for me uh, to suggest it'll run a good race. I think Obvious Steps, the other one that looks a really good bet in this. Uh, obviously, six last night at Forbidden Love. So probably the strongest form in this race and uh, has had a win on heavy track from its only start. So it's the other one that I do think is... Uh, Got a real strong chance. Number one, Enchanted Heart goes in the third. A good heavy track performer, which uh, obviously works well. And Natural Ruler rode Ellsberg last time out, um, and he, he's on Enchanted Heart here now. I think that might be down to the weights a little bit. Obviously, uh, Ellsberg comes in at 52, so I don't think it's necessarily a decision-based. I could be wrong, but for me, the way I read it is I think it's just a simple fact of the, the weight differences and that Nash has a few rides on, on sort of uh, bigger Horses are going to be carrying bigger weights throughout the program, so perhaps that's what it came down to. But you've got to respect that the National Rule is on, on uh, the horse, so $3.40. Favourite, uh, for me, third pick, but uh, obviously has a strong chance. And I really liked the win of Colin our last time out uh, on the on the Kenzo track. That was a dominant performance, winning by three lengths. And uh, I think if it could show that type of performance again, it could go pretty close, especially if it handles the heavy surface. Um, other chances, look, Fortune Seeker obviously has three wins from three on the bounce. Uh, not 100% confident on the form line but if it comes in with 52 kilos obviously it was good winning last time out uh, at a benchmark 68 on the Kensington track so gotta respect that and Xanthus obviously comes in third up just the wet tracks a bit of a, a, a query for that horse there uh, but recap the numbers for me oh, I'm very keen with the number 10 Ellsberg the obviously the three-year-old in the race um, just think that this horse has got a bit of upside and uh, I think that he can show some improvement off his first up performance which I thought was quite impressive as well so he goes on top for me ahead of number uh, seven obvious step in for second. In for third, I've got number one enchanted heart. Then in for fourth, I've got number uh, six colonel. Moving on to race number three on the program now. Bench mark seventy eight over the twelve hundred meters. And uh, looking at the speed map for this race here, I'd suggest that Gold Finch and Willow Heart they'll be the two main leaders. I don't really see too many of these other horses up pressing for the speed now. Could, be, could present a little bit of a problem to my on top selection number one Sagalis who. I think obviously be back in the field, but this horse is quite trustworthy. And I think at four forty and dollar eighty, the the place is a good enough price for me to have a play at. Um, I think first up performance at Canterbury behind Chat Mister Mosaic was just a fair run. Uh, obviously the wet track will probably suit this horse better. He does has run his best races on wet surfaces in the past, so I think that he'd be racing well. If he just doesn't get too far back, and if they can run at a decent enough clip, he should be able to come into the race and be right there in the finish and and hopefully win the race as well. So he goes on top. Uh, for me, ahead of number 13, Sars Fee, who I thought uh, was well over the odds in this race here. It was a good second last night in Trepidatious uh, on the Kensington track. Oh, sorry, at Warwick Farm. Uh, and I just thought that was a nice performance first up. And I think that coming this second up, we can show a bit of benefit. Uh, it's been really well backed as well. Open up at 26, was, which was just massive overs, and has been back now into $11. Uh, there was, obviously... The scratchings of, of McCrew and Intrepidatious, which have affected the markets a little bit. But I know that Sars Fee is still coming with a little bit of money uh, itself as well. Uh, in for third, I've got number eight, Miss Einstein. I think can run a good race first up. Has performed on heavy track before, so that's a good tick there. And um, 
obviously, I think it's a good distance range for this horse to kick off with. Uh, and I think we're expecting it to run a good race from barrier number nine. Uh, then if a fourth number seven, Willow Hart will be up on the pace and uh, be, be leading for a long way, I'd suggest. And again, it's another horse who has performed on heavy track before. So plenty of positives there. Uh, I do think the trajection and think free are probably two horses that are a bit over the odds. Uh, I think Freya has never placed on a, on a heavy track from two starts, but has won four times from five on, on a on a soft track. So that that's obviously a good positive. And then uh, similar trajections ha hasn't got great form on heavy track, but very good form on soft surfaces. So uh, they could both run good races first up. And Miss Steed is probably another who could run uh, a good good race, although its second up form is is pretty average at best. So maybe the ten dollars just might be a bit short. But look, I'm very keen to go number one Sagalis on top. I think it's the one to beat ahead of number. Uh, number 13, Sars Fee of the second. Uh, in for third, I've got number eight, Miss Einstein. Then in for fourth, number seven, Willow Hart. Uh, moving on into race number four on the program now. Again, a benchmark 78. This one over the 1,900 metres. And uh, look at the speed map here. I think there'll be Nick Navy Cross and Bobby D will be the two main speed horses in this race. I don't really see anything else challenging. I think that Quintessa might roll up and White Boots, they might sit just in behind the speed. I suggest they'd be probably the only ones that will be uh, in that leading division. Um, and I do think that Navy Cross off the uh, sort of the, small, the short backup is uh, probably going to be hard to beat here. Obviously ran last uh, last week here at Randwick on the heavy track and was beaten by Ice Bath and Vegas Jewel. Quite comfortably there, but I do think this is a, an easier race than that, that, that one there. And uh, obviously steps out uh, from the 600 up to the 900 metres, so I think it's going to suit this horse perfectly. Uh, and I do think that he just will run a good race once again. I really like the seven-day back up, and he's going to be rock hard fit now coming this third up, which he has two wins from two at third up. So I think we could have seen a good performance from him. So he goes on top of the $6. Out of number five, Kerwin's Lane has been really good since resuming from a spell. Two wins from two. Uh, it's been quite impressive. Rock hard fit now has the win on the heavy track. So plenty of positives there. Just my only little query is going to be that uh, it will be will be back in the field, and there doesn't look to be a strong tempo in the race. So... Probably going to need to make up some good ground. Has to be a very good horse to do it as well. Number seven approach to Screed's an interesting horse. Comes up from Victoria. Uh, has always shown a lot of ability. He's a big, raw, strapping type of horse. He's a massive um, horse. And uh, he's really good to look at on race day. I've seen him a few times down at Sandown, when, uh, obviously before uh, COVID. And he's a, he's a big horse and he's uh, very good to watch. And I think that up to 900 metres, he'll suit him very nicely. He's obviously... Uh, went stepped back to the 1500 last time out, looked too short for him. His previous two wins of the 1800 metres at Sandown were really impressive, both on rain affected surfaces. So I don't think that the heavy track, while he's never seen one before, will be an issue for him. I think he'll get through it just fine. Uh, and uh, I think that he's good, well over the odds at the Ford at $17. So he goes in for third. And then in for fourth, I've got number 11, Arcana, who obviously is knocking on the door for a victory and has a win on a heavy track before. So I could see plenty of benefit from it. The second last time out at Randwick to She's Ideal, where he's pretty good as well. Um, other chances in the race, I do think that Ryder in the snow could probably run well enough first up here coming uh, across from France. Uh, in interesting f first up performer, obviously a bit of a watch on the betting with this horse on race day and to see how it is in the mounting yard. Probably Lizzie's comments as well will be key for that horse's chances, but could be a bit over the odds first up at $19. Um, another horse that I don't mind in the race as well is obviously uh, number 12, Quintessa, I think, and just bounce back, uh, coming back on a rain-affected surface here, which has two star, two placings on from two starts on a heavy track. So recap the numbers for me, though. I'll, look, I'm pretty keen with number six, Navy Crossing. It's got plenty of progression. Third up, it's going to be running a good race. Ahead of number five, Kerwin's Lane for second. Uh, then in the third, I've got number th number seven, Approach to Screed, I thought was well over the odds. And in the fourth, I've got uh, number, sorry, Number 11, Arcana, was in for third. Then in for fourth, number seven, Approach to Screed, who I thought was a bit over the odds at uh, $17. Moving on to race number five on the program now. Again, another benchmark, 78 over the 1,100 metres. So moving on into uh, race number five, sorry, um, we've got over 1,100 metres. Uh, look at the speed map for this race here. I'd suggest that switched uh, McCruya, and believe uh, Mr. Mosaic and Lesage will more than likely be the main speed factor in this race here. I'd suggest that Cube Morale and Hulk probably look to settle back in behind that sort of leading division there. Um, I think they'll be the ones uh, that'll be sort of just sitting in behind. Uh, interesting race, this one here. Obviously, McCruya uh, was terrific uh, first preparation. Um, and, you know, comes in this looking really solid. Obviously, has good performances on wet tracks. Uh, I have gone against it first up, though. I just think that maybe it just might need this run. Uh, whereas I do think most crowns over the odds here at... At the seven dollars, uh, obviously, is a good performer on wet surfaces. Has a decent fre fresh record at three starts for a win and a placing. Uh, I like the recent trial uh, at Warwick Farm, beating Stolen Jade, which I know you can't take too much out of trial form, but Stolen Jade came out and won really impressively at Gosford uh, yesterday. So, 
uh, I think that 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 there will show that this horse uh, could run a good enough race, and obviously the third in the trial before behind Eduardo and Spirit World, uh, albeit um, Eduardo absolutely zoomed around the track there. We probably should have seen it going into the going into the uh, the, the Everest. He almost ran like it was a trial uh, that that exact trial in the Everest on that occasion, Eduardo. But uh, look, most crowned us. I think could show a nice performance first up here, and it's going to get. Fair bit of tempo to be able to run into um, off the back of, and I think can run a solid race in this. So it goes on top. And number nine, Paquette, who I do think uh, can run well. Also, obviously, a second of Blazing Miss last time out. Uh, I thought that was a good effort on that occasion. And third up here, Rock Hard Fit should be uh, right in the finish. Number 12, Am uh, McCurry, obviously has a stack of ability and a lot of talent. My only little career is first up here, but obviously... I was beaten in a group one by 4.4 lengths by Rothfire. So, I mean, uh, that was the only sort of the run that it didn't win last preparation. Uh, before that was uh, beat some really good horses. I mean, looking back through the, the type of form that we're, that we're considering with McCreer here, he probably makes it the best horse in the race. So just that little bit of a query coming back first up for me. But, I mean, look, he beat on a heavy track at Kembla, um, already blessed right on. Form out that hasn't been that great. But the second up, the second run of its preparation, of its career, was the, the real eye catcher, beat Newsreader and Wild Ruler, who obviously, as we know, is going into a, a Coolmore now as one of the favourites and is a real good horse. So McCreary has beaten some really good horses and the the, the, the victory over Marbusha and, and Panacotta looks quite nice for a race list as well. So you, you tie up McCreary's form, looks better than a lot of, than what it's facing here. But I just, I'm a bit concerned about it first up. That's my only uh, little consideration there. And I think I've gone and believe in for fourth. I think this horse will have the odds coming here from... Uh, from Victoria, sorry, ex, uh, Ali, uh, ex Archie Alexander horse, and uh, it's trolled up pretty nicely, I, I thought, actually, with the Bjorn Baker yard, Now I just think it's over the odds, uh, never has seen a heavy track for, it's a little bit of a query, but at $34, you can definitely take it, uh, and I just wouldn't be surprised if this horse can run a good race first up, so it goes into my numbers at the $34, um, other chances in the race, I do think um, Black Magnum usually shows up and runs well, obviously, was really good beating the Bopper last time out at Canterbury, the Bopper since come out one really impressively during the week, um, so that, that form's been franked there, so it's got a good chance. Mr. Mosaic uh, coming back onto, you know, so on the heavy surface the first time, a bit of a query, but has a lot of talent. $12, probably a bit over the odds. Uh, and Switch usually runs well on these type of surfaces also, so wouldn't be surprised to see it running a good race. Uh, Lesage third up into this and has a win on heavy track also. So plenty of good chances in the race. I just do think that uh, most Crown looks to, to be a horse that can run well first up at the $7. So it goes on top for me. Uh, ahead of number... Nine Plaquette and for second, if a third, number 12 McCreer, then if a fourth, number 13 and believe who I will be having something each way on because I do think it can run a bold race first up, especially if it handles the heavy. Obviously, it is a bit of a query, but $34, you're you willing to, to find out about it at that price. So, uh, moving on to race number six now, we've got the Rose Hill Gold Cup over the 12,000, uh, over the 12,000, the, the 2,000 meters. Jeez, it'd be a bit of a staying test for the cut over 12,000 meters, wouldn't it? Um, but yeah, sorry, 2,000 metres, uh, look, fun fact, Missy Beal and uh, Wu Gok looks to be the main speed uh, facts in the race, so they'd say Costello and Nima Leoff, one and Barrows, one and two, they'll be rolling up towards the pace also, uh, I'm very keen on the candy man here, I think this is a great race for him to bounce back into form, he's obviously had four starts on heavy service for four wins, he did those uh, during the Queensland Carnival when there was a lot of rain up there, so I think he's been crying out for a wet track. He's obviously last two performances have come on good surfaces. And I think that we'll just see a different horse coming back onto this rain affected surface. So he goes on top for me. Ed of Wu Gok, who obviously he's a terrific heavy track performer. He's had 13 starts for eight wins on heavy track. So you can never not have him in the numbers when he comes onto a heavy surface. He's got to be uh, given a chance. So he goes in for third. Uh, if for fourth, I do have number seven, Savakul. I think I've run a good race. So I thought it was not a bad effort in the uh, Port Macquarie Cup behind and Taunt and uh, Mantastic. And uh, th I think that that's, a, that's a good enough form. I suggest yes, I'll run a good enough race here. I can't really understand it has $26. Obviously, heavy tracks of queries had three starts on a heavy surface for a placing. But I, I do think that uh, this horse could, could run a big race, uh, especially at the $26, if it can uh, replicate what it has, did last time out. Uh, Nimalee looks pretty progressive at the 460, um, but has never seen a heavy track surface for the first time. So, uh, sorry, he's seeing the, the heavy track surface for the first time. So it is a bit of a query and $4.60 for me is a bit short to try and find out about a horse going onto a heavy track first time. So a uh, bit of a query there. Uh, other chances in the race, I do think that the Sounds of Cannons is an interesting runner coming across in the UK. I think this horse could run really well first up at $34.00. Really don't think that's the right price about it. Um, and obviously right down the way to the 52 kilos. So just would not surprise me this horse could run a big brace first up and uh, probably shouldn't be forgotten about. She's ideal. I've left her out of the numbers. Uh, you know, because 
She's obviously is a good wet track performer, but she's never had a crack at the heavy track either. So that just does concern me somewhat. But she's obviously uh, she's got the bar tough barrier draw to come out overcome as well. But she has good form um, at this distance range, and obviously she's got only has to carry the fifty three kilos, so she can be running a good race. Um, looks like Elvis was obviously with it last time out was disappointing performance. Could see a different uh, type of horse coming back onto the wet track. Uh, and obviously, fun fact and and think it over, they could run well enough as well, but they haven't been too exposed to heavy tracks either. So I'm willing to be the two horses that are extremely experienced on heavy tracks and are very good on heavy tracks, and that is number four, the Candyman on top, ahead of number three, Wu Gokken for second. In the third, I've got number... Uh, what was it? Hang on. Oh, in the third, number seven, Savakul, then in the fourth, number ten, Nima Lee. Uh, moving on now to the first of the, the, the feature races for the Rose Hill program, the Yes Yes Stakes over the 1,300 metres. Uh, look at the speed map here. Really good race, this one. I'm really looking forward to it. I think Eduardo will roll to the front with Man of Peace, Prime Candidate, and probably Hawkeye on her. They look to be the four main speed facts of the race. I'd say Dame Giselle and uh, Guy Trail probably set just off the pace uh, with the likes of Mr. Seawolf, Star of Season, Imaging probably sitting around midfield. And Deprive will probably go to the back and look to round them up from, from back there. Look, I'm extremely keen on Eduardo here. I think he'll bounce back from that Everest run. He obviously went miles too hard um, up front from that wide barrier. He just completely ruined his chances. But what I like with him is, you know, what I, he's obviously been very good on some good tracks. He was really good in that second behind Kaseek Legend 2 starts back, and obviously that's the right type of form. But he comes onto a heavy surface. Nash Borilla comes back into the saddle for Rachel King. So I think it's a very key jockey booking. Um, he comes onto a heavy surface, which he's two from two from. He's had two starts on a... Soft track for for two wins uh, from two starts. So, I mean, on a wet rain effect surface, he's four starts of four wins. So, I mean, that's absolutely perfect. He comes back to Rose Hill, which he's, he had his two victories first up this preparation here at this track. So, I just think there's a lot of ticks to suggest that he'll run a much better race. And at $7, I'm really keen to be backing him ahead of number one, Guy Tra, who... Obviously, he's a very consistent performer. He was excellent at the Everest, finishing third on that occasion, but comes on a heavy surface for the first time, and that could be a big query for me. He's obviously an ultimate professional, and he, I think he'll get through it just fine, but at $2.80, it is a massive, massive query for me, and I just can't have him at $2.80 uh, when he hasn't really, you know, hasn't ticked off that heavy track performance yet. He obviously he could come out and blouse him, um, but just I just think of that, that price. You can't take it when he's has never tried on heavy surface before because he could get on it and completely fail. Um, and I, I know it sounds a, a little bit obvious that can happen to any horse, but uh, I, I just think that I can't be willing to take him uh, when he hasn't seen the surface before. Uh, number 12, Hawkeye on her. I thought she was awesome um, in, in the Everest. Um, she finished fifth, and she was one of the only horses that battled on, on the speed. She kept with Nature Strip in that race there. I thought that was an impressive effort. They had every right, both of them, to finish out of the race, but a lot of merit to that performance, and I th thought she was excellent. Uh, comes back on a rain affected surface, which she has two wins from two on a soft. She's never seen a heavy track, but... I do think she could run well enough here, um, but coming back in, in grade somewhat, I suppose, from the Everest. Uh, and then number 13, Dame Giselle. Now, right down the way to the 52 and a half, she's obviously been terrific so far as preparation. Heavy tracks at query, but 750 looks a bit over the odds because she's obviously a horse that's been in great form this preparation. Um, imaging also looks over the odds, especially coming on a heavy track. Obviously, he's uh, been well performed on this type of surface before, so he's got to be given a, a, a bit of a push at the 15s. And start of the season, well, look, he was extremely disappointing last week, but he gets back on that heavy surface, which he's been looking for. So the $15, he could also have be worth an each-way value. So as you can tell, I mean, I've reeled off quite a lot of horse in this race, and that suggests to me that it is an open race. That's why you can't take Guitra, in my mind. I think I'd be really suggesting probably even laying him, to be honest. Oh, I know he's a very good horse, but I just can see plenty of others in this race having better chance than what he's got, and that's obviously a bit concerning when he's at $2.80. So... Uh, recap the numbers, I think number three, Eduardo, is the one to beat, and I'm really confident on its chances from barrier number one. It's going to get a much better um, run for that inside barrier, and on the rain effect of surface, expecting a much better performance. Uh, number two, uh, sorry, number one, Guy Tri does go in for second. I do think he'll be in the in the finish. I just don't think he can win the race. That's my uh, personal thoughts. Uh, in for third, number 12, Hawkeye on her. Then in for fourth, number 13, Dame Giselle. Uh, but like I said, big watch on imaging at Star of the Seas. I could see both of them bouncing back coming onto a heavy surface. So you can definitely have an each-way play at them if you're looking for something at longer odds. Uh, moving on to race number eight now. It's the uh, feature race of the program over 1,500 metres. It is the Golden Eagle for $7.5 million. I don't care what anyone says. I think it's fantastic because, you know, well, you can't get enough of racing. I mean, it's awesome to have uh, that... You know, there's some people that would be focusing on Derby Day and they'd be going, oh, the, the racing's crap in Sydney, so I'm not going to bother looking there. But the racing's not crap this weekend. It's actually a decent card, which is 
hence can, keeping a bit more interest in it. And I think that the more the more good races around the country, the better. If anything, if you're sitting at home, you, you love even if you're at the track, it doesn't matter where you are. I mean, you, you've got to love having good racing on all on the same day. I think it's terrific personally. Everyone, has, it's obviously a highly uh, discussed debate, but as a racing fan and a punter, I love it. I think it's fantastic. So. Um, anyway, enough on that. Could go for a long time. But look at the Golden Eagle. I'd say Sierra Sue, Fender, and Alligator Blood, and probably just thinking he'll try and spear across the outside barrier to lead them up. Fun start. Very tough barrier draw. He's going to have to try and, I guess, follow just thinking uh, into the race and try and find a slot in behind, which could do, but obviously there's a bit of speed drawn inside of it as well. So uh, be interesting to see where they, they land in this race here. Look, I, I've gone with Colette here. I think this horse coming out of a heavy track and... Really show a good uh, performance here. I love that it had, has had a uh, tick over trial in between runs. Obviously, its last start performance was back on the 3rd of October, a 6 to Probabil and, and Funstar. Uh, that, oh, that, of course, was in the Everest, uh, sorry, the Epsom. It was only two lengths off, though. It was a, it was a pretty... Um, it was, a, it was a pretty tightly run race there, and I thought that was an excellent performance. Um, it's been interesting how Cummings took this horse out to the 2,400 metres in, in the Oaks last pre uh, preparation in the autumn, and has now got her back running in, in, at the mile, and he's really... Uh, tried to pr push her towards a mile and from what I've heard from him he sounds most confident on this horse here so I'm going to go with her on top uh, look very open race though she had the six dollars she has had a bit of support um, so she goes on top for me have number two Brandenburg I think this horse is over the odds here I'm really looking forward to seeing him back on a wet track he's obviously hasn't seen it since last preparation his form from last prep is phenomenal and he's a much better than $34 chance and he'll get a perfect run in the race for barrier number 14 so he goes in for second for me I'm going to have a good each way bet on him um, other chances of the race, look, Superstorm has never seen a heavy track, but I loved his performance last time out uh, behind Mr. Quickie and Buffalo River. That, of course, in the two-rack handicap. So, Group 1 form, obviously, he comes in this with that, and I think he can be uh, right at the finish. Number 5, Rio Dini, I do think is also a very good chance. Uh, has never missed a placing, uh, only missed, sorry, only missed a placing once in its career. And uh, comes to heavy service for his first time, but it has had three wins from three on soft tracks. So, I don't think that would be too much of a worry. Um, and the, look, the other one that I obviously quite liked was Sierra Sue and Funstar. So if I'm going to have a box first four, I'm going to be having those in there now. You might want to take my box first four. So I'm not going to talk about too much because I'll probably put the, the mick on it. But obviously nailed the first four at uh, Bendigo during the week. So if anyone who followed me on social media and got on that, congratulations to you. So glad that you did. Uh, $50 turned into towards 1.3K. So I was pretty impressed with that one. Um, it was a nice little collect there. So... I'm going to be having a, a box first four in this one. I'll be having, obviously, the... the I'm going to leave Alligator Blood out. It might be a, the stupidest move I've ever made, but I just... I don't like how David Van Dyke's just not really talking him up. I know that he hasn't really been a, a type of trainer to do that, but he sounds generally concerned about Alligator Blood. So, for me, I'm going to have the two, the three, uh, the five, the uh, 12, 13, and then also the, uh, the... Did I say the five? Yeah, I think I said the five. As well. Oh no, Flit is the other number 11. So six horses uh, boxed up in a four. Um, so, oh, sorry, no, not Flit. Sierra Sue is going to be the other one that I'm going to have in that box first four. Now, I'll put it down in the description anyway, along with potty selection. So don't worry about that. Check that one out if you want to follow along. Um, Ice Bath obviously returned a four last time out. It was a good performance. Uh, All Saints Eve just had the one bad run last time out, but it could easily bounce back and 46 to 1, probably a bit over the odds about it. Um, and obviously, like I said, Flit. Has to be given some chance. Korea Dearest is a really good horse on the rise. Is stepping back, coming back from a seven-day backup. Could run well. Dawn Passage could be up to this. Um, just the heavy track, bit of a query. Obviously, I really liked his first-up performance, though, behind um, Flint and Alligator Blood, who it meets here again. I'm just not sure, actually, that the, the Silver Eagle form is the right form. I've gone around that. But, look, it's it's, it's an extremely open race. Very tough to tell. That's why I've gone with two bets. Um, one, number 13, Collard on top. Ahead of number two, Brandenburg, who I think is well over the odds at $34 in for second. Uh, in for third, I'm going to make this clear cut this time. Uh, number In for third, sorry, number five, uh, Riadini. So I don't know what I said before. So I, put, I, I, know, I said um, Superstorm earlier. So yeah, okay, Superstorm in for third. <laughs> then in for fourth, number five, Riadini. But uh, I'll, I'll, look, I, I don't want to leave Sierra Sue out. I'm just, I'm going to have to though because it's such a tough race and I, I'm keen on those four there. But uh, you could really play with anything there. Uh, race number nine, final race of the program. Benchmark 78 over 1,400 metres. Uh, look at the speed map here for this race. Just a surreal step and fender if it goes around this race. He obviously uh, is, is due to go around in an early race as well, potentially. So see where it goes. But if it goes this race, it'll be rolling forward. Al Mahaha won't be far off either. 
Uh, and Coterie, I think, will be up towards the pace as well. Uh, pretty, look, not a bad race to finish off the program. I do think the Cat's the one to beat. Um, I really like to second up, uh, second to Korea Dearest last time out. We get a good guide on that form with the Golden Eagle in the race prior. So I think the Cat's going to be hard to beat. Pretty keen to go with it at the $5. Ahead of number 15, Mirror Vision, who um, I, I think coming onto the heavy track actually might suit. It's never seen it before, but I do suggest that with its soft track performances, it could run well enough. So $9 looks over the odds. Number 16, Greek Hero. Seen it. Looking forward to seeing this horse come back. This preparation showed a bit of ability last prep. And I don't think the heavy track will be too much of an issue for it. So it goes in for third. And then in for fourth, I do have number six, Fender, who I think can run well coming onto a heavy track, which is two from two on as well. Sorry, um, other chances in the race. Look, Dancing Gidget probably has to be given a, a bit of a chance. Uh, was obviously fifth last time out um, behind Bombersade and Best Stone. Then it showed him some improvement. Uh, and the other one that I didn't mind as well was uh, number five, Stockman, uh, who obviously has good heavy track form as well. Uh, but recap the numbers for me. I'm keen to go number one to Cat in the final race. She has to navigate that wide barren. It should be pretty hard to beat for me. Ahead of number 15, Mirror Vision in for second. In for third, number 16, Greek Hero. Then in for fourth, I've got uh, number six, Fender. Now, I did leave Surreal Step out. I just thought it was well the odds to this horse. So I just, you know, it was a seventh first up. Obviously in a Silver Eagle, really good form race. Um, and it ran okay on that, that occasion, but uh, I don't know. I just think that 460s might be a bit short for this horse. Obviously, it does have barrier one and has had form on a heavy track, so maybe I'm being a bit stupid, but I just thought that there's a couple of others in this race of better odds that have better chance. I like to put make a push for any horses that I think that might be uh, over the odds. I only go the favourites if I look through the field, and I think, look, there's not many chances in this race. This horse should just win. That's how I, I sort of look at it with, with favourites or, or horses at shorter prices. Now, recapping for, uh, my best bets on the program. So look, I'm going to go out on a bit of a limb here. I'm going to go with race number seven, the Yes, Yes, Yes Stakes. Number three, Eduardo, is my best bet of the program. Really do think this horse will bounce back and run really well uh, and be hard to beat in the Yes, Yes, Yes Stakes. So it is in race number seven, and it is number uh, three, Eduardo, is my best bet of the program. Um, the other one that I really didn't mind as well comes uh, a bit earlier in the program, actually. It comes in race number... Uh, let me just find it. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, race number three and number one, Cigars. I think if it does get too far back, it should be right in the finish there um, and could be hard to beat. So that's my other second best bet of the program. Best value bets. Uh, look, I, I'm keen to go with uh, in race number eight. Um, and I'm going to go with number 13, Colette. I just think that this horse can run a really good race uh, here. And obviously, uh, it's a very tough race, but I do think it's a good enough price uh, for me. And obviously, Brandenburg as well is good each way value in that race there. Uh, and the other one I didn't mind comes in race number four. Five? No, race number four, sorry, with Navy Cross. Uh, that's uh, race number four, and it is race number six, Navy Cross, the $6 as well as um, one of my other best value bets of the program. Now, check out my uh, quality selections down below. Obviously, if you want to follow those, uh, obviously I'll put my box first four as well for the SESS stakes, and I'll be doing that uh, also with the Derby as well. So check those ones out. But uh, thank you for tuning in. Go and check out that Derby video if you've already done so. Go follow me on social media, C Lane underscore racing tips on Instagram, and then C Lane racing tips on Facebook. Uh, if you want to be checking out all these tips, and then also I do daily tips basically um, almost every single day. So um, should be able to follow along with those if you want to be getting uh, more involved with my tips and follow me in on those. Uh, subscribe if you're new, like, comment your, your thoughts down below. What are you backing tomorrow? I really want to know and want to hear. So, uh, and I'll be doing my best to get back to you as well. So thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. All the best on the punt. Hopefully you find plenty of winners uh, and enjoy the terrific racing on Derby Day tomorrow. One of the best days of racing in the Australian racing calendar. Really looking forward to it. Can't wait. And I'll see you guys next week.